Okay, so we have our bookcase and it looks pretty bland. Um, this is not a big surprise, as it is the default material in Fusion. So we're going to make it look a little bit prettier. So there's two ways you can do this. We can assign a physical material, and honestly, physical materials are not necessary for woodworking. You're probably not gonna do all the engineering properties. So just appearance is easier to work with. So A for appearance brings up this dialogue. We go down to wood and you want the solid wood. This is a newer type that they've more recently added. We'll go for finished, I guess. It doesn't really matter. And you can select the wood that you want. Now, none of these are woods that are typically found in Australia, perhaps the pine. So, But you can add your own by going into modify, manage materials. We'll cover that a little bit later. For now, I want to make this bookcase out of maple and I'm gonna put a semi-gloss finish on it. So I'm just gonna hit the download button. Now that that's got no down icon, it means it's downloaded it in my library. And I can just drag and drop this onto whatever I want. So because those were instances of each other, they're the same object just repeated, it copied it to all of them. Same goes for the bookcase sides. And we can't forget about the back. So I can either drag it directly onto the object or into the object browser. Now this actually doesn't look half bad as it is. However, if we go into the render tab, we can make it look even prettier for publication online uh, so that we can share what our creation is gonna look like ahead of time. So in the render tab, that actually doesn't look half bad, but there are some more controls we can play with. So I like to go into scene setting environment library and usually I find warm light which you can just drag and drop or double click on creates probably a more natural environment than some of the others uh, for product shots that sort of stuff so back over into the settings tab hit the position this is the position of the light so if we were to bring that up we're only going to render part of it so we'll bring that back to zero but we can change the direction of the light so we can look at how the shadows are going to be cast. So to me that looks pretty good. Go back into scene settings. A few other things that we can play with. So we do want a perspective camera, I think, when dealing with renderings rather than orthographic, which is better for uh, modeling. The focal length is just like what you'd find on a camera. So if we have a 16 millimeter lens, it looks very much fisheye type appearance. So 90 or 100 mil, usually what you're gonna see on portrait photography, that sort of stuff. And it tends to look a little bit nicer, a bit more realistic for furniture. Exposure controls, you can probably leave that on the default. Um, depth of field, you can't see at the moment, but it will have things out of focus, like on a SLR, if you've got a low aperture value, so f2.8 and a quick shutter speed. And the rest of the values we can pretty much leave as default. The camera controls here, while we've still got the typical uh, controls that you've got in Fusion, often don't highlight, particularly in perspective, the view that you'd normally view your furniture on your product on so i like to use the orbit control sometimes i get it lined up how i like others i don't now we can still play with the appearance of our materials here so we could change parts of this now that we've got some of the shadows we could go well this is fine maybe we think it's a little bit too bright and we can add some walnut to the sides and find that that looks a little bit too dark all of a sudden now these have actually all come together pretty well um, but as I said we were going to go for uh, plywood so before we actually render this we'll go back into the model tab because this is the only place we can find uh, manage materials so this is looking pretty good but as I said we were going to make this out of plywood so there should be some ply edges so while we might have a nice veneer on the outside, these edges should be pretty rough and require some edge treatment. Unfortunately, there isn't a plywood type texture built into Fusion. So I'm gonna go down to 
pine, unfinished pine, and these are distinctly different from the solid wood. Uh, the options are different. So I'm going to edit this, advanced, and we can change the material here. So we're going to just click on the source, desktop, I've already got some plywood selected. Now instead of applying this to an entire body or component, we just want to apply to select faces. For example, this face there. And that's looking all funky, so we go back in and we can play with some of our controls. Uh, these actually look all pretty good, so we'll go to the scale control. There we go, we can start to see those plywood edges. Now in this case, we can see that the plywood, is, the edge of the plywood is going the wrong way. So again, I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to drag this one onto the edge of the uh, sides. I'm going to edit that and I'm going to rotate that around 90 degrees. So we could probably give these a bit more creative titles. So this might be plywood edge, plywood vertical edge. Now, you, as I said, you would apply some sort of edge treatment. So you wouldn't see this sort of thing going on, but it's sometimes good to visualize where everything's gonna be uh, before you've done that. Or if you're making a jig or something where you may not put on any edge banding. All right, to me that's looking pretty good, so we'll close that and we'll actually start to render it. We've got two kind of main types of rendering. We've got in-canvas rendering, and when you change that down to quick, it well, it's fairly quick. And this is fairly good. It's not as good as some of the other options because this will just refine it for as long as it can. The other option is the render option. And in this, we've got two options as well. We've got cloud renderer, so that would send the file to uh, Autodesk to render and we've got local render. For this there's no real difference with cloud or local rendering. Obviously local rendering if you've got a powerful machine will be quicker. If not it'll be probably quicker to render it. So I'm just going to select standard quality on the cloud renderer. I've got unlimited available uh, I guess because it's enthusiasts. I'm not honestly sure where they come from. Uh, different values here will affect how many credits are required. So it's on a per megapixel basis. I'm going to hit standard. I don't want a huge render. So I'm just going to change that to a thousand. Uh, I'm fine with it having a background and I'm just going to hit render. And this is going to take a little bit longer because we selected the depth of field. So it'll just take a little bit longer to process. We can see it's processing here. If we click on that, it gives us the status. So we'll come back in 10 minutes or so and see how our image looks. Okay, so it's been a few days. It didn't take that long to render, but I just was not able to get back to uh, recording when the rendering had finished. So I've re-rendered it as a 1080p image rather than 1000 by 1000 as for these tall images it's um, a little bit better uh, perspective wise. So we'll download that image, uh, we'll just chuck it on the desktop. Now as I said the built-in materials aren't super useful for me because uh, they're mostly American woods which is fair enough. So if we go back into the model tab we can go to uh, modify manage materials and we can start making our own materials so the easiest way i find is actually to favorite a few materials and modify those so if we go into wood now this is wood not the solid wood or 3d wood and it has a few uh, downsides it's not going to give the same 3d texture but it is a lot easier to edit so just right click favorites Scroll up favorites and we can rename that to Fuzzy Oak is that is a, a timber that I use a fair bit. So primarily all I'm going to do is change the texture. I could change the relief patterns and all of that, but 
Um, if you don't need to, don't. It's a lot of work. So I've already got my texture there. It's not the greatest picture, but it will do. If we close that, bring up appearance, go to this drop down here, go to favorites, uh, and we can select Tassie Oak now. I could drag and drop that on. What we can do is replace all of the 3D maples. So as I said, we can drag and drop. That takes a bit of time, particularly if it was a more complex piece of work. In this case, we're just going to drag it over top of the maple and it's replaced all our maple in there. For this episode, that's all we're going to cover on textures and rendering. Uh, the next episode will be on 2D drawings followed by Cam and Sansi as well as animation. Thanks for watching.